two, one, you're live. Well, 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 we're back again. Guess who's back? Back again. The source is back. You better go tell your friends. That's right. We're back again. Miller had a morning show this morning that I listened to. I tuned in. I said, wow, let me finally listen to what these guys are talking about. Let me hear what the dumber show sounds like when I'm not on it, when I'm not speaking, dropping knowledge immediately. Immediately, smoke started pouring out of my ears. Immediately, the fumes started rising, and it set me off more than you could ever imagine. Now I get it, okay? I get it. I see. I've looked. I saw the thumbnail. I know what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about how disrespectful Miller is about Sean O'Malley. We're going to be talking about how Miller can never seem to give Sean O'Malley his credit until people start start talking and people finally start seeing. And then Miller wants to hop on the train again. Then he hops back off as soon as people start talking the other way again. We get it, okay? We get it. We've said it. We, we've exposed it. The guy's a noodle back. He's a fraud. He's a, he's a pancake. He's a flip-flop. He's a U-turn, okay? We just got to assume this is going to happen. But there's one thing I cannot sit here and go for, okay? And that is an absolute fraud. When I tuned in to this morning's show and listened, there was a subject being talked about that absolutely blew my mind. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't believe the words that were spewing out of this man's mouth, still giving credit, still talking about some type of legacy is there, still talking about there's some type of greatness. When I sat here months ago, I sat here months ago on this very channel, the channel I built from the ground up. You can call me Bob the Builder if you want. I sat here on this channel and I told everyone, Francis Naganu is an absolute clown for wanting to leave the UFC. It's the only thing he had. Now, sure, I said, hey, listen, if he wants to go do a one-off, if he wants to go make one check and be irrelevant for the rest of his life, he should go do it. Well, look where we are today. Shorter than I expected. Listen, I knew he, I knew he was a bum. I knew he didn't move the needle. I knew nobody cared about him. I knew nobody wanted to talk about him. I knew nobody wanted to watch him fight. But I didn't know it was this bad. I didn't know it was this pitiful. There are YouTubers who I don't even know the names of who are selling more pay-per-views <laughs> than Francis Nagano right now. I told y'all he was going to go out there. Y'all talked about this big, fearful man, the boxer, this big heavyweight, heaviest hand, scariest fighter, absolute legend. No, no, no. Not so fast. The source, the king, the one who gets it done, Mr. Intel, is right once again. And Miller sits up here, stays on his high horse, and acts like he's still right about Francis just because he got paid? Just because he got paid? What, le what, what legacy? Is th there's no legacy in this. What's the legacy? Is it? Is it getting paid to get knocked out? That's Francis' new legacy? He was the scariest man, the heaviest hands, this big, bad man. Now he's getting folded up like a bath towel. Now he's getting folded up like a bath towel in the middle of the octagon. Can barely stand up. Three minutes, five minutes down, pitiful. And Miller still acts like he was right about him. Acts like it was the smart move. Francis Naganu has single-handedly ruined his career by turning his back on the UFC, just like I said he would do months ago. The source, the king, the one who gets it done, Mr. Intel, is right once again. Now, Miller, let's talk about this Sean O'Malley crap, because this is absolutely ridiculous that you don't think he's, he's top six. 
it, 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 first of all, it's even disrespectful that you would even throw it on the header up there in the thumbnail and question it. There you have it, guys. Trey Mountain opening the show. What, what is this, your fourth week in a row uh, opening the show? Now you'll, you'll start to see the viewers flood in once I get on the live. Um, we're back to the yellow foam mic. That it was originally white for those that were wondering. Yes, that is not the original color. Um, he has a new hat, I guess. Pretty nice. New shades. New hat. Just bought it today. Shades. So, the shades. You know. Shout out to Tafosi. They sent these to the boys. Appreciate them. So, so the man got engaged, and he and he's up from here, I guess. Um, but we got we, we to gotta go back to business, and that is talking about... What's up, Drew? What's up, Beta? That's five minutes. I'm glad I didn't lose in my life, says Beta Quest. The People's Champ says Andrew, so I guess he wants to see uh, Chris Faye soon, and, and I'm sure he'll jump in. Tarzan Strickland, who has been coming through quite some time now. Welcome to the stream as well. Joe DeJesus in the building. We got some legends. We got Hito saying Miller being wrong. Well, Buster. listen, the, Fr the Francis thing I was Buster. right about. There's no question. No. But let's get to the nitty gritty. Sean O'Malley number six. I mean, that's a little ridiculous, right? Can can we be honest? Miller, when are you gonna stop disrespecting this guy? What is he gonna have to do? Is he gonna have to knock out every single one of the top guys in the UFC just for you to give him a little credit? Just for you to say he's a great fighter? It's disrespectful the way you talk about this guy. If that was going to be what he had to do, he already failed because he couldn't knock out Cheeto Vera, who was a walking punching bag. It's just, I mean, he's he's good. Again, he's very good. But we Miller. already. Yep. Miller, a, a good fighter doesn't go in there and put on an absolute striking clinic like he did. This is what I'm telling you. So People Corey Sanhagen is great? I mean, he didn't. He Miller. Corey Sanhagen beat him up, not to that extent. One not judge had a 50-44. Not to that extent. One, one judge. Miller, I'm telling you right now, they will take the tape from that fight and put it in dojos for history to teach dudes on striking. It was an absolute master class. I mean, it would have been if that didn't happen to his opponent before. But Corey Sanhagen did it. Then he has a debatable against Piotr Jan. I mean, we could talk about this every week, and I know that I'm right about this as far as he's just not proven yet. He's a very good fighter. He He's approaching greatness, but he's not there yet. But we do have a caller, one of your friends, I would say. A, a guy that you got that you maybe have a good relationship with at this point, well, Chris I mean, he Faith. Was absolute, he was absolutely flaming. Hold on a second. Making, making perfect Hold on a second. Oh, don't what? tell me the speaker's not working. We hear you oh, loud and clear, Chris. Whenever you yeah. hear us. Hold on a second. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. We hear you. Hold on a second. Ah, damn speaker. Hold on a second. <laughs> Nice shades, <laughs> Trey. In the meantime, <laughs> some some new guys. Tafosi, shout out to him. They sent the boys. They're like some uh, cycling shades. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Can you hear us? Hold on a second. Ah, right, damn. Hold on a second. Let me let me call you right back. Freaking uh, oh. sound errors. <laughs> no problem. Make sure. Uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll throw on, you know. I'll throw on mine because uh, people have been Miller, loving it. People say I do it better Miller. than you. So, Miller, you know? it's sad because you want to be like me so bad. Everybody sees right through it. It, it, oh, it is what it is. But... You know? Do you hear us, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Like, I don't know. Like, the like when I had you guys, like, the first one, like, I don't know. The sound error is like, what the hell? <laughs> don't don't even worry about it. We, we are running back to the topic that we were talking about earlier today. Remember Sean O'Malley being number six pound for pound. I thought that was a little high. Uh, I didn't hear what Trey had to say on what number Sean O'Malley should be, but maybe you guys agree on this topic as well, too, uh, two weeks back to back. You know what I agree on is that one day, even though, and look, look, this is what we discussed last week, and we could discuss it again. I believe one day Sean O'Malley will become pound for pound number one. That's what I believe. Well, don't say because that remember, he's going to shoot you for that. Remember, you, look, uh -huh. remember what Sean O'Malley said a long time ago, the first time when he became champion. He said, like, I want to be active all the way to the year 2035, which is the next decade. We're not even there to, to the year 2035. We're still in 2024. Correct. But honestly, like, I would love to see him fights, like, for example, like him versus Sanhagen, uh, 
Marab. I, I don't even want to get involved with Umar. I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. That guy, Umar, he's talking about, I want a title shot, bro. You're not even ready. Calm down. <laughs> um, th that's fair. Now, you mentioned Marab. Do you, you, you think he gets past Marab? That's a tough fight, Chris. It is a tough fight, but if I do see a cleanish knockout by, by O'Malley, I'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> I think that would make him great. That's where I would say, you know what? This guy is great. And the ironic thing is that I think he beats Marab if, if we're going to talk about it. Let's just be honest. I think Marab might be a little bit too small. Well, he is too small, even though Marab knows how to wrestle. But trust me, Sean O'Malley, he has tricks up his sleeve. I ain't going to lie. Oh, I mean, Sean O'Malley is getting a lot of credit. I just think number six is a little bit too high for my liking. I mean, if you look at the names that are right next to him or right above him, it's it's a little bit, I don't know, a little bit too overrated right now. Miller, not saying he's what not I'm saying. great. But, Miller, what are you doing? Yeah. Are you putting Alexander Volkanovsky over him? No, you're not. He just got knocked out three times. I'm putting, times I'm putting Drinkus above him. Miller, you're not yeah, oh, wait, actually, yes, I'm putting Volkan Volkan Volkanovsky has done more. Volk in are you putting Charles, o Charles Oliveira, who just got bullied by Islam? Like, come on, bro. What are you talking he, about? He, he just beat Benil, so there's that. There's Aspinall. <laughs> that is true. He beat Benil, but someone else beat him less than four minutes and ten seconds, which was Armin Zarukian. I saw that fight with my own eyes, and everyone was sleeping on that guy. They're like, oh, Benio can win. I was like, okay. Let's see what happens. When I saw that fight, I was like, eh, yeah, you're yeah, right. I ain't, I ain't. <laughs> Speak. Miller, Miller wants him down there with Izzy with, uh, with, with a non-active yeah. fighter. Somebody who's not even active right now. That's what Miller wants. But I don't know who's a non-active fighter. That idiot comes at Shemai. Oh, I hate that guy. He wants to say, I want to smash it up, bro. You, you haven't even fought. Any ranked middleweight Ooh. fighter for like God knows how long, and everybody was talking about oh, but he beat Jared Marshall. Yeah, someone who is not in the rankings, who is in the roster, but not in the rankings. Listen, it's a different. I, I love bashing Ham Hamza Shemaev. Let's do it. He he's not gonna he's not even gonna be top three in the middleweight division. I don't think. This is man, fuck this Hamza Shemaev. I was gonna say is fuck that idiot. Miller, I see what you do. I get your tactic, okay? You Listen, take one of the I'm top off. fighters, one of the scariest fighters in the UFC right now, and then you like to take them, and you like to manipulate everything they've done. You act like they're a bum. Like, they've, they've done nothing because everybody they've had put in front of them, they've absolutely demolished. What do you want them to do? I'm, what do I'm, you want them to do? Miller, I get it. Okay, maybe they're not fighting the best people. Maybe they're not fighting top-ranked guys. But they are absolutely demolishing every dude that steps in front of them. What else do you want them to do? Do they need to... Well, that's what I'm saying. Do you need a murder in the octagon? Is that what you want every time? Like, what do you want to happen? <laughs> you, sa you said you saw a pattern of me. I see a pattern that you have now that I think about it. You were saying Sean O'Malley's right. the greatest when he was knocking out people like Eddie Wineland. That's when you were already calling Miller. him the GOAT. Listen, Hamza, no. he, he beat Usman, a guy that came off the couch that, that never fought at 185. Why? Why? And he almost like, lost. Gilbert Burns fight. almost lost. I'm sorry. Okay, he Gil hasn't Gilbert proven Burns himself yet. almost beat him. I ain't going to lie. Gilbert Burns almost beat him. I did saw that fight, but Absolutely. it's not Gilbert's fault. It's Rick Judge's fault. That's their fault. You know, they're just cons up ball lovers. Um, we do have another caller waiting not to rush you, Chris, because we're going to keep you wild. This is a question for today's chat. This is what we're going to talk about, Trey, because I think this is a good topic. When callers call in, they're going to bring up certain fighters, and we're going to call them overrated or underrated, right? I think Hamzat okay. is overrated. I think Sean O'Malley might be a little bit. If you guys have any idea on good names that are overrated, please come to the Discord chat, call in, and we'll have a debate. Going back to Hamzat, I mean, Chris, it's pretty clear he's overrated, right? Yeah, but who, what, what rank fight has it be? Oh, don't, don't say, oh, oh, bro, that was a whack fight, please. For God's sakes, everyone just say it was the wackest fight Ooh. I've ever seen. Oh, that fight was so boring. I was like, oh, God, let me, let me watch the next fight. <laughs> he's beaten he's two, two rank fighters, just for the record. Yeah, but Uzman was welterweight, not middleweight. Okay. That's a big deal. <laughs> He was he was the best welterweight in history. Like I don't yeah, care, and true. he's a big welterweight. That, he's a he could easily fight. move up. It should have been five rounds. It should have been look. For example, what what was the fight with Dustin Poirier and the French guy? Five rounds. It should have been that. It should have been five rounds. I, but it but it wasn't. 
I know any, it wasn't. Any still, one. It should have been five rounds. But it wasn't any one. So this is what I'm telling you. Y'all saying he ain't beat, he ain't beat no ranked fight. Listen, he's properly rated. He's perfectly where he is. He's not he's not active enough to be, you know, the top guy right now. But he's just as much. I mean, Miller, he's going to be a champ one day. He'll easily be a champ one day. <laughs> what, yeah, divi- right. what, what division will it be in? I don't know. It, he, he can pick what division he wants it to be in. He will be champ one day for sure. I doubt it. And if he be good champion, his reign will end short. Pretty, pretty, pretty short. I don't know. I don't see many people beating him. Um, and any last thoughts, Chris? We're gonna add another caller here and feel free. You to know, jump my back last in. thoughts is that mm-hmm. I think there is a problem with this one division. I'm not. Th- I'm not talking about the bantamweight or the lightweight. It okay. always has like fighters becoming new champions, but every time is always injury and health issues. The only division that is the biggest problem is the heavyweight division. I thought you were going to say lightweight. I, I was going to No, guess. no, yeah, no. Yeah. Lightweight, no, no, no. They're good. They're always active. But it's the heavyweight division. I'm not going to lie. Do you know how many interim title fights they had? You know how many? You know who might be overrated at heavyweight? John Jones. That is true. <laughs> when are you guys going to learn? When are you guys going to learn? No, no, but answer to the question. How many... Interim title fights have they had from 2005 all the way to late last year? How many? What's the number? Tell me. I would I would say four. Mm, no, close. I would say six. You were very close. It's more than that? Five, is it five? No, it's seven. Ah, seven. gotcha, gotcha. Damn. Yeah, interim, no, title, interim, interim titles are the dumbest. Of course they're the dumbest, but, but it's, but bro, like, for whoever is the heavyweight champion, like, why is it always got to have injuries and then, oh, no, we got to have interim title, interim title. For example, like, everyone knows that Andre Olowski never became champion. He was promoted to heavyweight champion. No, absolutely. It's, especially, look, you want to know which one of the fighters was was unified the heavyweight championship for the first time? Fabrizio Ferdoom. Well, everybody knows he was on steroids, but, you know. Absolutely. Just like maybe John Jones was, too. And, look, at the end of the day, if there are some interim title champions they should fight the person that was holding the title that's my issue with john jones right now that he it almost seems he doesn't want the aspinall fight but do you remember when he was the interim champion but then he didn't well actually he was supposed to beat carmita you didn't fight a belt but we all know what happened before ufc 200 everybody knows i don't have to spell it. i know the whole truth <laughs> Listen, I think the whole interim thing is a joke. That's why Kobe Covington was only able to be Of course, old, it's old, a old, joke. Well, but that's what UFC a... does. But mm-hmm. they, they like doing it stupidly. But why no. can't they make it like a silver belt? Just a silver belt. Second place. <laughs> Kobe Covington will hold it. I guess you could say Poirier doing. would hold it as well, too. But Poirier might upset Islam Asha. Oh, Chris, let me get another caller in. Feel free uh, to jump back please. in. Yeah, okay, no problem. Thank you, Chris, for the call. Uh, we have another caller, Hito609. Bring up bring up uh, an overrated fighter if you have one. What's up? Welcome to the stream. All right. Um, I'm hearing. Hold up. I'm starting to hear you in the background. One second. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, all right. As far as the ratings um, with O'Malley, I'm okay with where he's rated at. I just don't like, like the timing of it. Why did, like, Beating Cheeto Vera doesn't put him over, like, like I, I don't understand how DDP didn't move. But then O'Malley was at eight, and then he beats Cheeto Vera, and now he goes up two spots, and DDP stays the same, and he beat Whitaker, and then Sean Strickland for the belt. I, I, I'm okay because... with O'Malley's at, but it's just I don't like the how some people move and some people don't. Say, say it with me, y'all. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's spell it out. Everybody say it with me. <laughs> Sean, O'Mal- Sean O'Malley had a title defense. DDP did it. Okay, we good? DDP beat somebody way below him. Sean O'Malley defended his belt and won. Well, okay. John, um, John, John Jones? No, dominantly. No, John Jones. John Jones won a belt, and he's, like, number two, but Leon Edwards had a title offense. He's number three. Ooh. And I'm not even a Leon Edwards fan, but I'm just going off your mat. Look at Trey's face well, right now. Well, okay, you're, ta- you're, is- talking about, you're talking about pound for pound, the greatest fighter ever in the UFC history. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, yeah, but that's also what have you done for me lately. So No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Look at look look up and down the you, pound you don't for see, pound ranking. You don't, you don't see retired fighters down, on there, Trey. You see look current up, 
fighters. No, no, no. Right look, now. look up and down the pound for pound rankings, and tell me all the super active guys that are on there. They got Izzy on there. They got who's uh, actually what's the, pretty active. Um, they got South African boy who's Pe- had like three fights. Pejeda, um, Pejeda Mahashev, Leon. Pejeda don't O'Malley. fight like that. No, but so to, to trade Leon, Leon definitely don't fight like that. That's what I'm saying. You're talking about guys who have like one or two, three fights in the past two, three years. Uh, All right, Trey, Trey, but like, hear me out, Trey. I'm not disagreeing with O'Malley being there. I just don't like the timing of it because he beat Aljo, right? That was in August. And then from there, DDP, um, he beat Whitaker and then he got the belt. And DDP hasn't moved at all. And then this guy beats Cheeto, and all of a sudden he jumps up two spots. That's where I just don't like – because Cheeto's so low in the rankings. I don't disagree with him being there. I just don't like how the timing is and why isn't DDP moving if he's winning. You know what I mean? I mean? Let, let's all call it for what it is. They're elevating him because they need him to be the star, right? He's well, getting look, preferential is, treatment. But here's the thing. I'm okay with this position. They don't need him to be the star. If you, if you look at the people – Below him, I'm okay with that. I'm not saying he shouldn't be there. Just why isn't mm. DDP why isn't DDP moving when he had two fights since Sean O'Malley's one fight? You know what I mean? If Sean O'Malley was going to be six, he should have been six from Aljo, not from Cheeto Did Vera. You That's see wild. See Sean O'Malley's fight, he absolutely demolished this guy in a title defense. What do you mean? He put on a master class. It was it was the most lopsided okay. fight okay. we've seen in and, years. And, and DDP. TKO'd Robert Whitaker, and he and that guy ate a huge kick from Paula Costa. Hey, this is what I'm Come, trying to tell you. Robert Whitaker ain't. Robert Whitaker sucks. But, but look what look what Can he ate please? from Paula Costa, and DDP was able to TKO him. I mean, that that got to say something. Robert Whitaker heavily overrated. That's one guy who was wow. heavily, heavily Heavy. overrated. What, right. Robert Whitaker, you want to talk about a what have you done for me lately? Robert Whitaker, you that's that's the key, that's the king of gatekeepers. He does not do anything. He's never going to hold the belt. He floats around 5. Like that's the king of gatekeepers right there. It's not a bad argument as we, far as what you've we done for have, me lately. This, this is what I'm trying to tell you. We have to stop piping up Robert Whitaker like he's some superstar. It's the same thing people do, do, do with Paula Costa. Paula Costa is not some belt holder. He's not going to hold the belt ever. He's never going to do it. Nobody's saying fans, he's a superstar. Do the fans but... like him? Do the fans like him? Do people get behind him? Sure, but they're not good. They're never going to be. No. The guy. The... Superstar and good, it, it, saying they're not good as well. Robert Whitaker is good. He's not a superstar and he's not going to be a champion. But to, I think you have to go through Robert Whitaker to get the belt. I think that's where he's at. So he's a gatekeeper. Yeah, and I, I'm okay with that. But like, all I'm trying to say is like, if you have two fights, one's for the belt and the other one is against the guy you have to go to to get to the belt, and then O'Malley's at, at, at eight. And then all of a sudden, O'Malley beats Cheeto Vera, which we all knew sucked. What, why does that make him... I'm okay with being at six. He should have been at six in August. Is all I'm saying. I'm not disagreeing with you, Trey. I just think I don't like the timing of it, um, and I, I don't like how DDP is not moving when he actually technically was more active, and he fought good guys. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he was fighting bums. Chido Vera is a bum. Now, now everybody's saying that. Remember what everybody was saying before Sean was about to fight Cheeto? Uh, I, I, I definitely said Cheeto was a bum. Miller sat right here on this channel telling me that Sean was going to lose to Cheeto. And then uh, to, to the once. back to the Francis Miller is yeah. completely wrong on that. I, I will say this, Trey. Like as far as money being made, he probably made more outside of UFC. He wouldn't have made thirty million UFC. I, yeah, I you was. gotta admit that it's a, that's a lot of money. He wouldn't that's have made half of, of that. He wouldn't have made half of half of that. He Why? wouldn't have made twenty percent in in the UFC. <laughs> Because, because right. you, you, Trey, no, but Trey, he doesn't move the needle like you said, right? So these guys, their base salaries are probably going to be like, even at best, he's going to get like 1.5 mil, 2 mil a fight, right? And then the pay-per-view points, he's not selling enough fights to make that go up to 30 mil. Bro, it's just not going to. He could have had another 10, 15 fights in a UFC career. Instead, he's going to have one or two more boxing fights. He locked, in, he, locked in 30, he locked in 30 million. 
to lose to ruin a legacy. That's this is to go to go to, to go one and one. No, 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 to, back to the whole speech to, I gave y'all before. Listen, if money's what you want and you want to sell out and you want to do all that, go do whatever you got to do. Go get on OnlyFans. Go do whatever you have to do. I don't care. Go get your money. Go sell crack. However you want to do it. But, if you want a legacy, if you want a real fight legacy, you want to go down in history. You want to be one of the greats. Then actually do it. But don't go say, sell out. To have four fights in boxing and then ruin your legacy and be some loser. He's a loser. That's what he is. He sold out for money. It is Did, what it is. Didn't you say he fumbled the, the bag the though? Didn't you say he fumbled the bag though? He he fumbled the legacy bag. Absolutely. Oh, now we got to add the word. Le- you know, but, Miller, 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 here's but, the thing. Congratulations on your $20 million. I've been saying this. 30. Congratulations on the 20, 30, 30 million. Congratulations if you get up to 50. You're an absolute nobody now. So if money's what you want, you got it. But guess what? You don't have a legacy. Nobody cares about your fights. Nobody watches them. You're a snore show. And not only that, nobody wants you back anymore. We don't want it, you in the it, UFC. It, PFL could care less about you. They, they haven't even done anything real with them yet. In hindsight. Apparently he's supposed to be having some championship fight. You know how many people's probably gonna watch that? Sixteen. In hindsight. That's what I'm Miller. This guy is a right bum. Moves. Nobody cares about this dude. In hindsight, will you have done what he did? You told me he was a star. He was the guy. This is one of the scariest dudes that, in the world. He had the heaviest he, hands. This, this guy is going to be he, one of the greatest still, fighters in history. And he went absolute. Miller, if you told me, he hey, don't get some, come get some money. Just give up your legacy. Just give up your reputation. Just give up everything you built. Hey, no, why am I doing that? I'm still building it. I can still make the money. I can still sign the deals. I can still. Miller, his his reach. Miller, his reach. Miller, his reach. The legacy's not gone. He's still arguably the best. Yes, it is. 4.9 thousand is not a legacy, Miller. That's not a legacy. Despite that, well, it's 4.6. But despite that, (laughs) he's still arguably the best heavyweight in the world right now as we speak. No, he's not. He just got folded like a bat pal, Miller. He got folded like a lawn chair. That has nothing he to got do with fold. MMA. There goes his chin. There goes his chin. Not that he really had one before, Pe- but there Pe- it goes. Pejeda got knocked out cold by Adesanya. What did he do after that? Win the light heavyweight title. No, yeah, no, what'd no. he do? What'd he do? He yeah, turned right around, same. came right back into Octagon and said, yeah, I'm going to go get another belt. Not Poirier, when. Poirier and when got fought no- in another league, demanding money, demanding Poirier, different fights and Poirier, all this bull crap. Poirier got knocked out cold. He came back a dominant win. That has not him notice being knocked out saying. in boxing. Him notice being knocked out saying. in boxing yeah, has nothing saying, to do no. with the MMA. Miller, Miller, you're saying Miller that, but notice you what you're saying. Notice what you're saying. Came back. This dude's a loser and ran and started demanding fights and all this stuff because he wanted money. Nobody cares about this guy. Dana wanted to pay him chump change. He did the right thing because he was worth chump and, change. And, and 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 he still might be the best heavyweight alive right now. I think that's up for the debate. Who's better he than him? Had, Who, who's better had, than him right now in, in MMA? Who, what Miller, Dan real Francis. quick, mm-hmm. uh, everybody Miller number one. But no, um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, what what is he talking about? Francis <laughs> but, and all the heavyweights in the UFC. I would take Miller, anybody you, over you him can't, right You now. can't I'm use the comeback. Everybody, you can't use the comeback from knockout argument and then use that same argument uh, opposite when you talk about Volkanovski. Because you do the you same can. thing. Absolutely, you, you can. Do the I, same I, I thing. Oh, his chin's not the same. His chin's not the same. Volk can't come back because he's uh, been knocked out before. This and a third. Incorrect. You said that. You absolutely and, said that. Incorrect, because you got to take the whole argument together. What did I say? That Volkanovski short notice got knocked out. That worries me a bit. But when it came to Dustin Poirier, he got uh, uh, knocked out cold. But it wasn't going up a division on short notice. I think he's going to be fine coming back and fighting. But no, it depends on the fighter. When it comes to Francis Ngannou, him being knocked out cold like that before, also Volkanovski got knocked out before uh, the Islam Mahashev fight before as well too, where this is the first time for Ngannou, this is the first time for Poirier being knocked out that cold besides the McGregor knockout. But he was it, knocked out, knocked out. Basis. He, he didn't remember anything. Yes, that that, that he, was a little scary. That he Yes, I agree. He but he's still he, arguably the best heavyweight in the world. Who, who is who's clearly that? better? Who, who's better? That's what I'm saying. John, so John the legacy's Jones. not John Jones. John Jones. Sergey pa- Pavlovich. Ha- have you Tom seen Aspinall. pictures of John Jones? The man looked like he's been retired for three years. I think he's over the hill at this point. We we don't we haven't seen it yet, but that's why he wants to duck Tom Aspinall. And Pavlovich got knocked out as well too. You think he beats Francis Ngannou right now? Yes. I don't know about that, man. That's tough. Oh, bummy that's tough. boy, noodle knees, bro. He he would come back in the UFC and get 
dogged you by the so? top ten. Uh, the Heath, what do you 10, think? He would get dogged by the top yeah. ten. Yeah. Uh, also, like, look at people with a, like look at Connor. He went to boxing, did that whole show, and then came back to UFC and was never the same. Point. Like you got to remember that. These guys go over there and they they're he's training got, for one thing no- specifically. He's got noodle knees. He only boxes. That's why it's too athletic. He's old. I mean, how old? The dude's 40 years old. Like, this dude's a bum. Get him out of here. He's a nobody. He's 37 right now. I think someone said he ruined his his legacy. Miller, while he's focusing on boxing, everybody is still getting better in MMA. So it's like he's going to come back. He's not going to be the same. He's going to catch an L. He's 37 years old. so So that is up there. But it's up for debate. 37 and got knocked out like bad. Yeah. He even said it was bad. He he got knocked out pretty bad, but I think can we admit that uh that we don't know that he still might beat every heavyweight in the world no. right now, or or is, does he clearly lose? No, I think he I think he loses. well he's gonna go back to PFL, so he might fight some bum over there. That doesn't count to me. Whatever he does in PFL, I don't want to hear it. Those those people don't count. Then I UFC guess, or nothing. Then I guess it's always a what if, right? Who knows no. if he would have beat no, Pavlovich, no, no, what, Aspinall, answer. John Jones? No, no answer. shot he beats him. You know. That's a heavy puncher in Joshua that's boxing. It's a different sport. It's a different gloves. sport. A different, is, it is heavier gloves. We have another caller. Hito, any last thoughts? No, that's it. I'll see you. All right, we'll catch you in a bit. Uh, Hito609 with the call. Um, he had some decent points. We have a, we actually have, we'll, we'll see how long it takes for him. Uh, Trey, maybe you could count for us. How long it takes for Joe to get his mic ready. Um, yes. he, he, has up, been a, he has, he has been yeah. a regular in the morning show yeah. and people are enjoying his conversations with yours truly. What's up, Joe? Miller, what's going on? How are you from this morning? I'm, I'm doing great, especially knowing that I was right about everything I said this morning, but, uh, Overrated, underrated. Do you have any names that you want to throw out there? Underrated. We're going to go with Sean O'Malley. <laughs> underrated. I love that, Joe. I love that, Joe. Because it's, it's How just... How is he underrated? Okay, the fact that you are still, after you've been proven wrong today already this morning, by yours truly, the fact that you're still saying that he doesn't deserve to be at number six makes him underrated because you are saying he doesn't deserve to be at number six. So I'm telling you, by your logic, he is underrated. If he's underrated, okay, what if I gave you the grounds of six is just perfect, but anything above that would make him overrated? What would you guys say to that? So you're changing your position now. You think he deserves six. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a what if. What if he deserves number six? Would it be like, are you guys saying he's better than six if you guys wanted to make that argument or no? I'm just trying to see where you guys are at. Here, I'm going to, I'm looking at. He's perfectly placed. Okay. Just, just checking the temperature. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think you can rate him. I might put Leon under him. That's it. Exactly. I would, I would put Sean O'Malley in the top five and I would put Leon at number six. Speaking of underrated and overrated guys, I think Leon is underrated being number three in the pound for pound rankings. Very, very. He's overrated, overrated he, being at number three. He, he, he at number three, be, he's overrated. He should be number two minimum. I would argue he should be number one. Miller. He Yo, you are really off. smoking Miller, something. Miller, listen to me. I, want, I really want you to hear this, okay? Really Yo, take off your shades, Miller. Let me see your eyes right quick. Seriously. Seriously. I want you to hear this. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, I'm about because I'm about to I'm about to be real honest. Okay, and you, and you I don't expect nothing saying. less. You you understand what I'm saying here? This is this is how. What's in that Lacroix? He, he it's <laughs> probably crack cocaine. He got dogged, but like for five and a half rounds, dog. I don't know why that matters. Whooped on. Listen, I don't listen. know why that matters. Whooped on. What? Listen, whooped on. Then had a title defense. Against, you can't just say then he won. Look, he won by knockout. Right? Listen, he won by, he won he, by knockout. No, no, no. Be fair. Be fair. You go ahead. You go. He won. He won by knockout. We just can't make fairy tales. Oh, he got dog five rounds, but he won. Okay, now we can move on. It's an important detail. Am I allowed to talk now? Or you want, you want absolutely, to absolutely. I'm just you know want to clear. He got dogged for five and a half rounds. Then one. And then one, obviously, everybody knows what happened, you retard. One of the got, best knockouts of all time. Got craziest knockout of luckiest knockout of all time. 
Okay. Then he had a title defense mm-hmm. against the same guy that he won, that he won the title against. Right. That looked like an absolute shell of himself. Here's where I'm about to be honest now. Mm-hmm. Here's okay. where I'm about to be honest. Okay. Then he beat a rundown. Here we go. This is sad. I just I just run down journeyman. Wow, Trey. And wow. Colby Covington. Oh, okay. Okay, let's talk. Look, not hurt. Trey, you I see, like that. You, you, saw Trey, the lip, yes. you, you saw the lip quiver on that, Joe? Uh, the man is hurt saying this. <laughs> Look, I, I know you caught that. Wait, talk to us about that. I'm Trey, not talk- done yet. Mm-hmm. And now you're wow. telling me because of those three fights talk to him, Trey. that he should be second talk in to him, pound Trey. for pound fighting in UFC because Wait, Trey. of that resume. Trey, not second. He said first. You hear him? Yeah, minimum second. Minimum I'm second. Chris, I'm about to hit the Chris face laugh on you. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous, Miller. It's laughable. Like that's laughable. That's what I'm saying. You're like, tell me you watch the highlights without telling me you watch the highlights, because clearly you're not watching the fights. That resume does not make you the pound for pound best fighter in the UFC. Not at all. Um. And, and it's the way he's winning mix. the fights too. It's not even it's not even his caliber of opponent. It's the it's it's a mix, the, the right? It's a mix. The Covington mi- fight was awful, I'm, Miller. I, I, it I, was I'm horrible. Sorry. I'm so glad we're here, guys, because there's an elephant in the room. Before we talk about Leon Edwards, I I they're calling me high that I'm drinking crack cocaine out of my liqueur, but I just maybe there's something wrong with my drink because I want to make things clear. Did Trey just call Kobe Covington a journeyman while his lip? Yes, did, Miller. Did, did, did you see his lip? He was like. Yes, Miller, well, we like, saw that. I, I know you, you guys caught that. I could, I, I'm definitely oh, going to make a man. clip out of it. The man almost cried. So I just want to, can we return and go back to that? Everyone wow. saw it. Did he just call Kobe a journeyman? He thought if you're out there, wow. please clip that. Because everybody saw it. The man almost shed a tear. He twitched a little bit. I'm going to have to pour one out tonight. I, that I, one's I, hurt a little I, bit. I know his main point was Leon, but can we talk about Kobe for a little bit? Isn't he a little bit desperate calling out Ian Gary? Where I think it's pretty clear he loses that fight as well, too. I want to shake your No, it's head. not. Let, That's not clear. Head. You know what? I think oh. this is safe to say. Kobe Covington is a bum. Tra- Trey wow, was actually, that Trey, is Trey, Trey crazy. Was actually, Trey was actually a little I'm not bit saying that. generous. I'll never say um, that. Th- that I'll li- never say that. The lip might be quivering again. I mean, li- the guy. Look how hurt the guy looks. The guy is depressed. I'll, I'll never call him a bum. You watch your dag of mouth. You must I hate mean, America. If you uh, hate America, just say it, Miller. He's a, he's a bum. Let, let, let's just call him for who does he beat right now? I don't think he beats anybody in the top five. Thank you for becoming yeah. a member for twenty seven months. What's, what's the Beta, top five quest. right now? He says, whoever that is, it isn't Trey. Got to be a, sp- a spinnaker. Uh, I've never seen Trey not try and suck off Kobe. <laughs> oh, First of all, watch your oh, daggum mouth, there. Watch your daggum uh, mouth. A skinwalker. Look, look. He called him. <laughs> um, go. All right, the top <laughs> the top five is Drickus, Sean, Adesanya. Oh, wait. Oh, wrong division. It's middleweight, crap. middleweight. Yeah, uh, holy, um, Leon, Usman, Bilal, Shafka. And then it's and then it's Kobe. Then it's Jack Della Maddalena. He doesn't beat any of it. I don't even think he be beats Gilbert Bilal. Burns. I don't even think Honestly, he beats Gilbert Burns. I, I, think, I can see him beating Jack and Bilal. I can, Bilal. I can see him beating Gilbert. I can see him beating Gilbert. I can see him beating Gilbert, Jack, and Bilal. He, he, yeah. you, know, you know what he is? He's the Marab of the uh, welterweight division. No, but Marab without, is better but without, than him. But without, uh, but no, without no. the pace and the gas tank, he, he's like a poor man's Marab. Is that fair? No, okay. he's, like, I mean, he's, like, he's like a poor man's Marab. Yeah, Marab could actually hurt you. I don't like that. Of course, you don't like that. You were quivering. You were about to shed a tear when you said you called Kobe Covington a journeyman. Can we focus on that? Is that what he's actually, always been? I actually he, can't believe he. I actually cannot yeah, believe we, 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 we that he, he, he. I can't believe he actually said that. Yeah, let's let's, actually, let's talk about. It. I actually, I'm you look relieved that, as if that, that was a heavy on. weight on no, your, on your really, shoulder. Exactly. On you know when someone gives their, their their heart their, their their life to Christ and they're like, "Wow, that felt good." I actually telling the truth, uh, for once. Like, um, <laughs> that's where that's where you know it, it feels good to kind of you know just accept the truth. Yeah. Are, he are came you, clean. You know what? You know what he looks relieved. His skinless, clearer right now. I mean, he you know looks like a new man. Gives their life to Christ. I'm feeling <laughs> convicted right now. Like I just, yeah, I'm feeling like a now. Those were beautiful words. Colby Covington oh is a God. journeyman. Wow. 
That's has, crazy. Has he always been. Um, Let me just say this. Mm-hmm. Colby Covington is still one of the greatest fighters to ever see that division. And I truly believe with my whole entire heart, if Usman was not there on the greatest welterweight run in history, Colby Covington would have held that belt the whole time Usman did. And, and, and isn't it beautiful how everything just circles back to who ended that run? Leon Edwards, the man who's underrated. So we could go back to that. You call Kobe a journeyman. We could get past that. Leon has been undefeated this whole time. The only time he wasn't more active was because of the pandemic, and he wasn't able to get over here. He beat arguably the best welterweight of all time. Um, he he would have beat Bilal. Um, um, I think he beat Shafkat. Listen, Leon, underrated. Is that fair to say? No, they have him at number three, the pound for pound. He's, he's overrated. He's not underrated. This is, this, which is why I bring you back to the – Got the belt with the luckiest head kick in the world. That was the most incredible head kick in the world. After he was like gone for that. five rounds, add the title defense against the same guy who was a shell of himself and then beat Colby. That does not make you the pound for pound best fighter in the UFC. It just doesn't. Islam's resume stacks up, I mean, a million times higher than that. So, so, um... yeah, if you wanted to make the argument, you could say Islam might be a little overrated. Technically, oh, no. from his resume. We, from we, his we, resume. Not from the eye test. From the yeah. eye test, I think everyone sees that he is a dog and he is he is nice. But from so, his resume, you might say Islam could be overrated. He hasn't even defended his belt against a true 155-pounder yet. So we, we, we might have to get Joe a camera because he has been spitting facts uh, as of recent. You know, with the, me, with the thing about Islam Mahashev... Don't get Joe a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, so going back to the original point, um, if we're talking about resume, so I'm glad you brought that up, Joe, because it kind of helps my argument. Um, what has John Jones' resume been in the last? Hold three, on, hold on, years? hold on. He's it's not high. just resume. It's not just resume, Miller. So, it's re- it's resume mixed with how are you beating your opponent? Are you whooping your opponent's butt like Sean O'Malley is almost every single fight? Or are you just getting in there, getting lucky, little decisions, you know, beating your guy, but not really dominating, whooping on him? You get what getting I'm saying? Whooped, getting whooped for five and a half rounds and having a lucky head kick and winning the belt. 12 fight yeah. win streak. It was the elevation that hurt him. We all know if that wasn't part and a factor, he would have dominated him in that fight as well, too. Leon, I think, is a little bit underrated. Now, going back to Islam Mahashev, uh, Tarzan says Islam overrated is crazy. Boracho in the building. What's up, Boracho? Welcome to the stream. He says that was a nice way of putting it. What what exactly was a nice way of putting it? Uh, Kobe being a journeyman? Uh, Leon is on a 12-fight win streak, says Beta in caps lock. Uh, Tarzan said he steamrolled everybody. Okay, let's talk about Islam. Who is everybody? Uh, and uh, I'm not, Dan by Hunter, the way, I- Bobby Green? I'm not saying that Islam is overrated. I'm all I'm saying is that if you wanted to make a case for him being overrated solely based on resume, like Miller, your whole point is your whole hold on, Miller's whole point is Miller's whole point is that Leon's resume is better than Sean O'Malley. That's his whole point. And I and we're saying resume does matter, but it's how you beat your opponent. It's resume mixed with how you're beating your opponent. Islam is going in there and murdering everybody he's fighting. I think who your opponent is matters too. And uh, yeah, he's murdering a guy that doesn't even fight at 155 in Volkanovski. Look at so, how Leon won the belt with a kick after getting dominated for five and a half rounds. I don't and know why this Look at right. how Islam won the belt choking out the dude, put him on his back, knocking him down. Do you see the difference there? Yeah, I think the, the I think the head kick is more impressive. The, you see the dominant. I think the head kick is more impressive. Being dominated for that many rounds, even though he took Usman's back in the first, first um, the elevation got to him, but he was somehow Miller. able to weather the Miller. storm and get the Miller, job done. I'm it. more impressed just by that. It. Just say it. Leon hit the jackpot, okay? He hit the scratch off. He hit the jackpot. He got lucky. He won. Okay, Which the makes it more hit. impressive. That's what it was. That doesn't make it more impressive. That, that, that makes that, it more lucky. That would be true if when they fought in the trilogy, then he somehow lost. But no, he dominated him in the third round. All right. Listen, no one's talking about the rematch. We all know he won the rematch. That's not even in debate. So, so, so. But, so, but he didn't. He didn't get him out of there. It wasn't like he was looking like he was in a different class. 
You know, I mean, he won the fight. You you know who's a name that I think is underrated at this point in their careers? If we just want to get a little bit spicy with it. Oh. oh. Dustin, Dustin Poirier. There we go. See, Joe should... I agree with Joe, you. Joe, oh, I agree with you, Miller. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I agree with Miller. Underrated? Mm-hmm. Yes, underrated? underrated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, guys, please. I can't do this. Seriously, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. Listen to me. Look at the way you're talking I'm about him. I'm dead serious when I say this. He looked awful in his last fight. That's he did not, not look. He, he did. What are you it, talking it, about? He knocked him out. Beta, he, it was I, a I guy care. with staff. It was a guy with staff that had okay. worse stamina than me. He had that staff and he knocked him out. He, he was not. He couldn't even breathe. He was just swinging like wild, like wide open. I could have knocked the dude out. So how did he look bad, though? Because he looked off. That's what I'm saying. He didn't. No, he didn't. Dustin, the real Dustin Poirier. He was getting. He was getting beat in the first round. I, I hope you all know that, right? Can we? Can we? Pause I hope you know that, can, right? can we pause on the Dustin Poirier was getting dominated? I really don't and understand. Was what, what? What damage did he, he was, take? He only got. We only went to the ground because he pulled the Miller, gate he was getting, that he almost locked in. Miller, Miller, he was not getting tagged. tagged. That no, he, he wasn't. Was he wasn't getting yeah, tagged. First of all, yes. He, what damage? Well, well, look, please, let's watch the whole round right now. Let's watch the round together I, right now. He oh was my getting gosh, tagged I wish we the could. first round. He was I getting really tagged the first round. Not to Stop. mention Miller. Every time Stop. he pulled, every time he pulled on on Benoit, it was the dumbest thing ever. Me and Drew were Agreed. sitting there laughing Agreed. at the TV because there's no chance, and there's not a snowball's chance in hell he was ever going to pull that choke off ever, ever. While Never. You were, while you were cutting so with not Drew once, and so watching not it, one time, so not one time was that ever a good move. Not once. Okay. And he got on top of him every time that happened. Can, Did he get back up? Sure, but this is what I'm telling you. This is where the staff comes into play. This is where the sickness. This is where the an- antibiotics come into play. That oh matters, whether you want it to or not. It matters. Now I'm telling you right now, if you had a healthy Benoit going there, straight up 100 percent healthy Benoit going there and be the well, dog that he has been this whole t- entire time, he would go in there and I absolutely dominate Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier looked awful as soon as he took his shirt oh off and gosh. stuck in the and stood in the octagon i said what the heck i thought they did a, i thought they did one of them things where they 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 got the mask you know what i'm saying like joe biden be doing where they have the fake mask somebody could be going up there for joe <laughs> biden talking i thought that's what they're doing for dustin poirier he looked awful his face looked awful he looked gray and just like kind of like white pale looked like he had a no, bad weight cut or something going on he did not look good he does not look like the same dustin poirier now i'm telling y'all he's gonna go in there with the dog he's gonna go in there with somebody who is 100 percent, and he's gonna get his clock Knocked off, bad, bad. You I could. can't, I can't do this about Dustin. He, he, he has never, he has this. never lost two fights in a row. He beat an up and comer that people were calling the boogeyman, and the beautiful right hook that he landed, the left straight down the middle, not taking really any damage when he got taken down, almost submitting him. If Benoit doesn't roll out of that, he gets submitted. Dustin Poirier is maybe a little bit underrated because they thought he was over the hill, but he's not. He's a special fighter. He's a special fighter, and I would even dare stay, say standing toe-to-toe if Islam chooses to do so, that might get a little scary for Mahashev. In a five-round fight, if he doesn't finish Poirier early, the longer the fight goes, the more it benefits Dustin Poirier. I think he's a little underrated. And listen, you could say that Dustin was choking the life out of him. That's my, Maybe that's why he was so gassed. He was choking the life out of him with every single guillotine attempt that he had. Bro, he was on antibiotics. He didn't. Okay, have maybe at all. Like he was sick or whatever you want to. Not. I mean, I guess it's sick. I, I don't understand how you could use that argument, but I can't use the <coughs> argument that Usman was tired from the elevation at Salt Lake City in Utah against Usman the second time. Miller, you mean Leon was? You can use it, yes, Miller. Yes, you can use it. It just makes no sense because he dogged uh, him for five now, and a half rounds. Uh, now, it just now doesn't make the, any sense. Miller, it, you say it, he but was it doesn't tired. make any sense. He was tired. Mine actually makes sense. Le- Leon was tired because of the elevation, just like Costa was that night, just like Luke Rockhold was that night, just like Jose was that night. It's part of the mm-hmm. equation. At the end of the day, the better fighter won that being Poirier. But you guys were high on Benoit because you guys are fans. I get it. Oh, we want to see the new guy do well. Miller. I'm tired of seeing Poirier win. Miller, they don't like him. I, I, have, inside I, I, source. I have an inside source, Miller. Oh, let, they, let, let, they, let's yeah. play, let, let us hear it. Let's hear it. Miller, M- Miller, do you remember when Dustin Poirier was fighting old buddy from New Zealand? What's his face? Old buddy from New Zealand. What's his name? Hangman. Oh, Hooker. Dan Hooker. In that fight, 
that was a dog fight. Remember that fight? That was a complete dog fight. That was Absolutely. crazy. Yep. And Dustin was talking crap to 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 uh, Hooker. Yep. Yep. Either like right after the fight or whatever it was, and you know these soft little boys from North yeah, Carolina, I, I, they don't I, really like they don't like the trash uh, talk. That what? Because yeah, I yeah, Hooker, that's what it I was. I think Hooker called Poirier something soft or something like that, and then he was basically yeah. saying in between rounds who's soft now or who's yeah, not ready exactly. for a war or something yep. like that. Is that what it is? Yeah, Miller. They didn't like that. They want guys to to trip for all the for all the crap that Trey talks. He and, wants guys to go in there and hug and kiss each other and you know say hey hey oh that was a good punch you got me there oh good oh good kick oh you got me there good. Yeah, and, and so. you, you know what's another pattern, Joe? It, it might be a little bit, you know, I, I don't know how it it isn't obvious. Poirier beats the American Chandler. Now Poirier is the bad guy. Leon beats the American Usman. Now Leon is the bad guy. Leon beats the American Colby. Now Leon is a bad guy. They're just fans of the sport, not necessarily choosing fighters for who's better. Poirier beat Benoit, the up-and-comer, the new guy. Now he's the bad guy. Listen, Poirier at 35 years old, He's arguably, let me know if this is a yes or no, he's arguably the biggest threat in the lightweight division right now. I agree. Him and Charles. Him, Charles, and Armin. Him, Charles, and Armin are the top three I don't in the lightweight division. A, I don't even want to put a take in on Ma this. On maybe this in that order. Maybe in that order. I don't order. want to be a part of this conversation. This is how bad this conversation is. What, what What's wrong about what we're saying? Well, first of all, Usman, like, I don't even know if, like, I'm pretty sure he, he doesn't even claim, claim America. <laughs> he he wrestled in high school out here, you know. Maybe I reached a little sure bit. I'm pretty sure he claims nine. I'm pretty Ma sure maybe he I reached Nigeria a little bit or something like that. First of all, but that's okay. Ma maybe you talking about Mar you talking about Marty Marty Fake Newsman? Yeah, Marty Fake Newsman. I'm pretty sure he comes from one of the Africas. Okay. Second of all, I don't even want to be a part of this conversation. Why not? Because it's absolutely ridiculous. What Dustin part? Poirier. Dustin Poirier is not nice. Dustin Poirier. Is How? Not good. What makes Crazy. him not good? What makes him not good? That that's what I just don't get. The same reason you hate on Sean for beating Cheeto. He beat a dude below him. That is just an up and comer that hasn't oh, even made a name. But wasn't he for the himself. boogeyman at one point? Ah, oh, how interesting. That's yeah, just... when he's a hundred percent, doesn't have staff, isn't on antibiotics, can actually train. You know what this I'm saying? This is sad. This is sad. You know. Is it sad that that actually goes into a fight? That's weird. <laughs> no, it's it's sad God, that fighting Poirier, sad. Poirier is not getting the credit he deserves for being so crisp with his striking. That right hook was beautiful. Exactly. The left straight down the middle was beautiful. The guillotine was beautiful. The guy, you guys say that he was getting dominated in the first round. I just don't see it. If anything, he I was not. He was almost ahead. Miller. Miller. He definitely lost round because really? because he finished the round on his back, and he remember he was fighting off a he was fighting off a. Uh, a back a, take uh, and a rear naked choke. A back choke. take and a rear naked choke for to, mm -hmm. to end the round because he pulled he pulled the guillotine choke and almost choked him out and he did it and he did it several more times and he had his neck several more times in that fight and so then it ended up on the ground but he never even got taken down and then on the feet he looked better than him the entire fight he did not look he did oh. not look like the 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 secondary uh, striker in the fight. He looked like the first, the primary, the best striker in that fight whenever they were exchanging on the but feet. No, first and was, second round. But no, I was overrated. That's another topic we could talk Listen. about because he hasn't beat anybody. For if Vola, that, that's what we're going to say? True. That that's makes true. him the boogeyman? Overrated. That's important. Wow. Who, who, who rated him as the top guy? Like what? Are you because he about? he was overrated at the time of the fight because everyone was saying he's going to be Poirier. But what was I saying from the beginning? I said, listen, the guy hasn't beat anyone to the level of Dustin Poirier, and who was proven right once again? Fight. He also didn't fight any of the previous guys he fought with staff and on antibiotics. Here's the, the deal, though. Here's the point. Here, I want to make a point here. And, and we got another if, call after this one. If me, you, and Joe are standing outside. Here we, this is okay. already starting weird. Okay. Me, you, and Joe are standing outside together, and I put up a target, and I stand up a target right here, and I go, hey, guys, watch this. And I punch the target, and it and it falls over on the ground. The horrible take. Are you guys going to be like, baby, I gosh, baby. man, that was awesome. Are you, you guys going to be like, okay. That's what happened when Poirier knocked out Benoit because he couldn't even put up his hands because he had staff and was on antibiotics and was just standing there. And Poirier punched him with no hands even up. Didn't even have to defend himself. Just punched him one time and went down. That's but, exactly what happened. Benoit was throwing bombs. It's just Dustin Poirier has great head movement. 
He's a, he's a legend in the game, and I hope that he gets the title shot next. Joe, we got another caller. Let me drag him in, and feel free to jump back in. Yep. All right, let's get it. Uh, we have Hito six oh nine. What's up? Uh, thank you for the two dollars beta quest. Don't be silly. Jump to Gilly. I might have to get me a shirt actually. Of I, I believe he came out with merch with that. Might have to get that. What's up, uh, Hito? What first of all, like the stats of the first round clearly shows Poirier was getting dogged. It's not even close. Thank Poirier you. threw sixteen punches that Thank first you. round. To, to sixteen punches to what? 58? Can we please watch that together? Like, please pull um, that round up. So six, sixty-eight punches in comparison to f- sixteen. Fifty-three punches landed by uh, Ben. W- like, it's not even close. Then there's two takedowns and there's three three minutes and twenty seconds of control time between the control time. So he had him in control for three minutes and 26 seconds and still got off 68 shots and significant strikes with 38 out of 49. Poirier had 14 of 16 strikes in that first round. It's, it's, that, that's called getting dogged. What are we? That's, three, you know, thank you. Three, what are we? Three, oh, three, you're telling me you look crisp. Three submission attempts. That's, that's not nothing. Good. One of them was good. One of them, he almost finished it. No, that's a no, bi- no, no, One no, of them was, was good. Never, that, that, was, that was that, that was a, that, that was, was, a, that was equivalent to um Brian Ortega versus Volkanovski. That's how that's how tight that guillotine was. It and was guess close, what? and he didn't comp- no. and he didn't get it off. That's his only claim that, to fame fine. that round was that close guillotine. And is Benoit that, is is landed strikes that never hurt Poirier. When was Poirier hurt? I was just I was just watching some. I saw right hooks where he he made Poirier duck. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Um, yeah, no, no, you, 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 you're off. Wait, 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 wait. What was that? Talking to my daughter. Talking to my daughter. Oh. Talking to my daughter. Hold on a second, dog. It's all right. Um, so not not only that, you got um, but mm-hmm. in, you can't deny the fact that you're talking about Poirier looking so good. He landed those hooks. The guy was gassed out. Did he fight a healthy person? So like, forget forget the fact that we think Benoit was good enough to beat him. He didn't fight a healthy person. The guy clearly had issues with the staff. We knew that going into the fight. I, I even I, told you, like, hey, they're saying he has staff. That's concerning. I don't I don't think that's true. I, I think that's an excuse. I think the same thing happened uh, with Abus and Strickland. It, I, I bring up it, this example it, all the time. Abus look extremely tired because you start a pace like that. These guys like Benoit, they're so used to starting off hot and but having Miller, their he way. Had staff. Okay, like, but day, look, look, he didn't go in healthy. When has he ever gone past the second round, Hito? Benoit. I, I, I don't know. Once, I don't, I don't, one, once, and that was his loss by decision. Besides that, every single fight that he's won is a knockout or a sub in the second round. But he wasn't able to do that because it's Dustin Poirier. Instead, but, but, you, and, but and, and Miller, again, you can't. Mm-hmm. And you talk about like this this guy. You you act like he had to work for that that straight and that right hook. The guy had his hands open. That, the, what, did, do, what, did, what did what did Poirier show that was actually impressive? Because, all right, let's say Benoit's a bum. I'm not arguing that point no more. He's a bum, right? Dustin didn't show me nothing that he's elite. The guy came in with his hands open. So what, why are you saying when like, you're guy, When you're tired, you make mistakes, and Dustin is precise enough to land the big shots when he needed to. Anybody. It, my it was daughter didn't knock him it, out at that point. It, it was that, a, that, that, that showed me nothing. That it showed me nothing. It started off at a crazy yeah, pace, saying, and Poirier, so. the veteran, was just able to keep that pace. Poirier was uh, tired Miller. too, Miller. but he had anybody, more discipline because he's great. Have done that. Do you, no. do you see how he came, he came with his hands no. wide open, just running no. face first? That doesn't Listen, impress me, Miller. When Miller, Ben Askren would have knocked him out. Poirier, Poirier was just as tired too, but there's something that's called the dog that Poirier has that Benoit doesn't have as much as Poirier. Poirier is that nice. He that, was t- Poirier not, was yeah. Poirier looked more tired than Benoit in the second round. If you, if you look at it, if you watch it. Agreed. Miller. And Agreed. He still, and he still got and the done. first round. And, and he still the first got, round. And he still got the job done. But well, Miller, tell him to come pop. Not- tell him. Tell him to come pop the same pills that Benoit was. Oh, wait. And and, and, and Hito's saying those shots were not impressive. If you, bro, those shots were incredible. Some beautiful power behind those shots. Yeah. Anybody can do that to a heavy bag with no hands. And pretty decent speed as well, too, behind them. Listen, Poirier deserves the title shot next. Oh, okay. And what do you think he's going to, what do you think is going to happen with that title shot? What did he show you that, oh, that that guy got Islam? You think Islam's going to run that with his hands open? Because I know what Islam got enough. that Poirier doesn't like. A head kick. Poirier Listen, doesn't that, like those. That's one in his career. That, that's Poirier one doesn't time. like those. That, that's one, nobody likes a head kick, it, but it happened once. 
We all make mistakes. We we all fail at times. That was Poirier's. Ooh, what, what did Poirier show you that he could actually beat Islam? You're crazy for even bringing this up. Resilience. Oh, elite, okay. elite striking. He's a southpaw just like Islam Mahashev. Mahashev hasn't defended against anyone as good as Poirier. All those things I like. I, I think Oliveira is better than Poirier. Um, You saw what happened to him. Right now, yeah, that was... A, um, Oliver. Oliver is a wild card. Oliver is a wild card. Oliver really doesn't card. really believe what it, that's what I'm saying. Miller is at the point where he's just talking. He just says whatever. He just does whatever. He doesn't believe what he's saying. Do you believe yourself when you said that Kobe's a journeyman? I just want to make things clear one more time. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Ah, sensitive subject. I, I, I Hito, just know you want to talk about that? Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather talk about more like how 2024 is super garbage for you. And you're only claimed to flame this year. Is, is Poirier knocking out a guy that has staph infection and then Taporia. That's it. That's all those you have to hang on this year. You've been wrong pretty, about Francis and Ganu. You've been pretty, wrong about you, you, you go two and five in every card, and in the one card you go two and five, you get the one I, I Taporia. Went three and two. I went three and two the last card. Whoa, whoa, big dog. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, two and five and three and two is a big difference. You, you think, See, you this, think this, you, is what, this is what Trey Hito. Oh, oh, you know, uh, Usman was winning the fight. Okay, but he got knocked out. We got to say the whole story. I was three and two. I still picked some pretty good Miller, fights, some I, good I, underdog yeah. fights. And you and, and you you stake your reputation on a walking punching bag. That this was a little tough. To... I, I thought the first fight was going to have something to do with it. This is, this is and, and, and like we tried telling you, he had a freak accident and kicked the the, 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 the nerve. I can't even fucking pronounce that nerve. The All I'm saying is... Yeah. The cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the the thing is, you can't see it for what it is, Miller. You really thought, like, Cheeto had it. What did Cheeto show you in that first fight that you think he had a chance? Especially the two fights afterwards, he had a chance against O'Malley. And, yeah, and this well, is how bad you are at watching UFC. Malley, you, yeah. you, you took a freak accident. Ooh, it would still win. You just like the same thing with the Leon, you know what I mean? It, it's so not a freak accident. Is that, is not, I, I don't even agree to the terms that it's a free ac- freak accident. It's a kick that landed that hurt him. It's, and Sean, no, no, well, did not, you guys see the meme? Hold on. Did no, you guys see the meme no, of Sean O'Malley landed. after? The, the, the guy barely took any damage. The guy has like seven ice packs around his elbows and his kneecaps. And his face looked all busted up against a guy that didn't even throw punches. So Sean O'Malley still might be fragile. Fragile. That's that's another you're, you're, topic. You're mad that he takes care of himself. That's part of the that's no, part of he, the game. He looked that's like he it. went. He looked like he went through a war when he Miller. barely took any punishment. So that's another. Miller, when you that, beat somebody up for 25 minutes, it probably does hurt a little bit. Okay, I'm sorry. When you're whooping on somebody for that long, when you're throwing that many shots, tagging somebody that much, yeah, you might be a little sore. You might you might have a little soreness going on. Back to the freak accident, Miller. It was not leg quick. It was a toe. A toe hit that nerve, by the way. So it wasn't nobody plans and game plans. I'm gonna use my big toe and hit that nerve. That's not that's a he, freak accident. Yeah, that's not true. He uh landed his toe on Frank on Frankie Eggard's uh chin and he knocked him out. That's what he does. And this is a true story. You can look it up. Everybody everybody <laughs> knocks out Frankie Edgar. That's I mean that's, all I gotta say is mm-hmm. like you can make fun of Trey with a whole Colby Covington thing, but your MMA takes have been garbage. And the fact that garbage. you think Dustin Poirier I has a chance against I, Islam, I, 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 I will three record this. I was and, three and two. I, and you're going to have to answer to this to do. And when Marab wins, you're going to have to answer to that too. Just you, saying. Marab's not going to win. He's going to win. Marab's not going to win. win. Poirier has a real chance. And you felt the same way when you said Volkanovski was going to beat to Poirier. And who was right on that one? Yours truly. That's your one time being right this year. No, that's not true. Three and two, the last card. You, your your last card, you got mm-hmm. MVP winning, which we both had, right? And then you caught Gilbert Burns getting dominated and getting lucky knocked out. You are literally you should play the lottery because Gilbert Burns gets knocked out. Luckily, he he was two and zero, and even you said it going his, into that third round. His chin always been suspect. He got caught just you, like I. How did you have the fight winning? Because I haven't recorded. I how have, have a, I have it two zero Gilbert. He was up. So, so how did you have JDM winning? A decision, and he exceeded decision. expectations. It, it, it was not even close to that, buddy. He, he exceeded expectations. Not even close to that. He was exceeding expectations being up 2-0 and then knocking him out. That's not – he got lucky knockout in the third round. So that's that's I'm your one see. take. Then MVP, you get the win. And then you got Dustin Poirier going against a guy with staff That's a beautiful – that's a – every, 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 every time you say really the Poirier – Every time you say the Poirier one, it like, you know, it, it, it's little goosebumps. What like, wow, I really, called, when, I, when I, you, I really called that when, one. When, the, when, the, when there's two healthy people going into it, what happened? 
you got your take wrong. Cheeto, I'm, I'm a People little healthy. Upset. I, I'm and a it's, little. It's, it's really, really rely on actual MMA, not staff infection, not luck knockouts. You're garbage. Um, You're really bad this that, year. That, that's that's not luck. And uh, the Cheeto thing, he could have done a little more, I, I, I will admit. It's a, it was a little frustrating that he didn't leave it all out there. That might be a coaching issue, a mental issue. He needs to work on that. But if he did, I, I could do what you guys do. If he did do more, he probably could have won. If he would have this, maybe this would have happened. At the end of the day, I picked the right underdogs, Poirier, Ilya, Taporia, Leon beating I got to say before I go. Is yep. that I, I I shared my my password to ESPN fight pass for you. Go back and watch on fights and get better at MMA because you're really bad this year. Thank you, Hito. That's that's and, but, gonna be but the we best were, thing Miller can do right now. But but we were both three and two. Isn't that ironic? I mean, I I don't know what he means by that. But all right, cool. I was gonna see if he pulls off a Chris Faith. We have another caller. Um, let me grab uh Chris Faith one second. We had one waiting. Uh, Beta Quest in the building. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, me. sir. What's up, Beta Quest? What's going on, y'all? Um, poor, the Poirier hate is crazy. Let's talk this, about it. This dude has put in some years, gave us some bangers of fight. Let's not just discount his entire like career because at the end of it, he can't touch gold. There are a lot of people who are great fighters who don't make it all the way to the top. Let's say, like, boxing, you have David Tua. Great heavyweight boxer. He's a man with hands. People are scared to go in there with him, but he never touches the title because that's just how the you know that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes in the fight world. There are guys who deserve their due from their credit, and you, we don't got to tear them down for not being able to touch gold when there's people who are you know who best them in whatever way it may be. That's just how that's just how it comes down to it. You know that man has put on dog fights, absolute dog fights. We got McGregor sleeps from him. Come on. There's some memes there. There's greatness in Poirier's fight. Now, does that does that excuse the fact that every time he gets to the championship, he falls short? No, but you can you can tell that there's a fighter there that people don't want to step in. He was the underdog and he came out on top. St. Denis was he's a He's French special forces. He's supposed to dominate this just a regular guy in yeah, Poirier. All facts. And okay, so he had staff. Okay, people fight injured, hurt all the time. And it doesn't take away from their performances. But what did happen is he got hit, he got put out, and there's nothing else you could do about it. There's nothing else you can do about it. He's on medication, dog. Like. Piotr Jan had, what, a torn ACL, I think, it recently came out. He figured out a way to get the job done. Corey Sanhagen wrestled five rounds with, with um, Rob Font with a with a torn shoulder. Come on. Every, things happen. It's it's the fight game. It's unpredictable. That's how it is. That's just how it is. So, the build, we, we have, have built – go ahead. I'm about to ask. If, if you don't have any lungs or any legs under you, it don't matter. It don't matter. It's an excuse. It's not an excuse. He's it's on excuse. medication. He has staff. We, we've okay? seen that's like that's something going on in your body that your body is not at a hundred percent level. Not not an injury where it's like getting healthy. It is actually truly damaged at its core level. That's in your blood, bro. We've that's seen... not just like a muscle injury or something at one part of your body. It's your entire body through your bloodstream. All the antibiotics through your bloodstream, through your entire body. That affects you than just having like a sore arm or a broken leg or something like that. That's just going to affect that part of okay. the body. That's fair. That's fair. So then what about Michael Chandler? The Michael Chandler win. He got dogged in the first two rounds of that one, right? What happened though? He came back and slept the man. This is what he does. Great. This is this he, is he didn't have staff infection. He wasn't on antibiotics. This is what he does. But Noir, that fight was gonna play out exactly the way it played out. It was just a matter of time. We've seen young fighters like him who beat the lower class of their respective division, and then they go up against a veteran thinking they can Not, start off listen, hot, and then they listen. get caught and they get tired. That not was, it was a matter of time. 
Not to mention he had all that going on with him and dominated Dustin in the first round, which y'all nobody wants to admit. Which Tito just brought up the stats. Nobody wants to. I mean, he was winning the first round. Offensive jujitsu off of your back does end up giving people control time. That's what pulling guard does. Like it's it's an ineffective tool in a in a UFC match because it does cause you to lose um, control, but you're still in a position where you're not at the best of your ability to move to the next spot, especially if you're caught in the guillotine. It's called fight IQ. Daddy almost finished, which it, which means something because what what did he Benoit almost nowhere. finish? He didn't stun him. He didn't get the rear naked choke. He did he, stun him. He did stun it, him. I don't think he's. Stun, I don't he think stunned that's true. him in the first round. Yes, he. Bro, did did like he got he got hit with some watch. shots. He he wasn't wobbly. I don't remember Poirier being wobbly, being hurt like that. He he got hit with some big shots, but again, did Poirier is a veteran. Right. This is what I'm, I'm not here to defend the law. The loss of Deneen over anything. <laughs> My main point is that Poirier deserves his credit as a great fighter Absolutely. who comes in and gives you bangers, absolute bangers. Listen, and the disrespect Poirier, is crazy. Poirier Thanks. was a great fighter. He'll probably go into the Hall of Fame. He did not dominate this fight. He did not look like the old Poirier. He is a bum and I, on his way out. I, w- I want to see how much your bias is, Trey. Uh, Answer me this. Who is the better, quote-unquote, because you would say Poirier is a journeyman, so is Kobe Covington. Who's a better journeyman in their division? Uh, I mean, I don't. I, just, I agree with Beta. I think I think Dustin has all-time fights. Okay. Like, oh. it, like old wow. Dustin, like when he was coming up, when he was the douchebag, when him and Connor were having their rivalry and everything, mm-hmm. like that's a legendary moment in UFC. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I would e- e- equivalent. I don't know what the equate word that. Mm-hmm. Equate that to with Kobe. Man, the, the the fall from grace that Kobe has had, man. Trey, I appreciate the honesty. Man. I can be real. I can be honest. I'm the source. I'm the king. I'm the one who gets it done. I'm Mr. Intel. I know the UFC. I don't just come up here and talk bull crap like Miller and be wrong all the time. So, so obviously, Poirier was underrated. Is there anybody else that's uh, maybe overrated or underrated in your eyes, Beta? Uh, uh, the roster is kind of kind of booty right now everybody seems to be um ducking their their greatest prospects like let's say uh i guess it'd be right now it'd be machado he's probably the most overrated like hype train we got so far we don't really know what he's truly capable of but he has this back i don't, I don't understand where this backing is from because like dude hasn't gone out there and showed us anything truly impressive uh, can, you, can you think of anything that was just like spectacular that he's done to deserve th- this massive amount of hype behind him besides have a wife that uh, you know got him to take her last her ex-husband's last name that's pretty impressive but that's not his you know his doing even then that would even be more so is he a little bit overrated maybe and even then so that just shows how much Kobe sucks because Kobe's overrated because he beats Kobe I think pretty clear, pretty easily. At this point, Kobe is overrated. He doesn't deserve to be, what, number four in the division right now? That, that's actually what I came on to ask. How did Kobe's brain go up with Jack Della Maddalena's win over Gilbert Burton? How does that work? Because Kobe is on, what, like a four-fight skid? <laughs> what, 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 how does that work? Absolutely. What are we uh, doing here? It's, it's a great question. I, I mean, I couldn't answer you on why he's still where he's at on the rankings because he, when was the last time that Kobe won? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Masvidal? Masvidal was his last oh, notable might have been president. Uh, oh, Masvidal, <laughs> yes. March 2022. Yep. His last win, which you, I don't even know if you could argue that's a good one, was Masvidal. Before no, no. that was Woodley <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> it's 2024, Trey. And that was a great win. That was a great win. Against a 40-year-old frozen one. First of all, first of all, I don't want to hear this. Okay, like I said, he's been fighting. He fought Usman. He fought Leon. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? It's just, he lost ain't fought ball. no bump. You know what I'm saying? If he, <laughs> and lost if he was getting... Well, okay, it is what it is. That's what, like I said, <laughs> if Usman wasn't there. He would have held the belt the whole time. I'm done talking about Colby. Let's talk about how dumb Miller is and how he gets all his takes wrong. Uh, any he, last thoughts, Beto? He, yep. He, Ian Gary's a dog. I don't care what nobody says. I get people well, hate him. We haven't, seen, we haven't seen him dog anybody, though. We haven't seen dog. it. 
He dog he dog Neil Magny. Would you would you agree to that? When Neil Magny was on okay, his run fine. and everybody was hyping him up. That's fine. He, I mean he he, he beat Jeff fine. Neil. He beat Jeff Neil. You think that's a good win? He didn't dominate. I didn't think that was a good win. I didn't actually. I was underwhelmed by that performance. I didn't think he Jeff did Neal any. I, I was more. I was more concerned for Joe Rogan and whatever he was going through in that fight because obviously he was gonna break a wrist, blazing fucking. Yeah, it was Machado. It was, it was, it was crazy. It, it was bad. He was impressed by every leg kick. It he was, knocked it was out insane. Daniel Rodriguez. That's a decent one. That's a decent. What has Daniel dog. Rodriguez done in the last three years? Oh, he's, Je- a, he's a journeyman. He's a dog. Shafkat looked way better against Jeff Neal than uh, Ian Gary did. But with all that being said, I I do think if Gary fights Kobe, he wins. I think. Uh, but if, if Kobe the- comes out looking like he did with Leon, hell yeah, there's no even there's no debate about that. But yeah, if Kobe we get like throw. you know, won't even throw anymore. Yeah, Kobe. Co- yeah, that was Damn, ugly. Trey, Trey looks hurt with talking about Makes it. Me so mad. Uh, oh, how old is he now, y'all? Is he like 36, 34? Oh yeah, yeah. I, th- I think Kobe. Wait, wait, Didn't he call wait, out wait. Stephen Thompson like Thompson. immediately after that? Thirty-six. That's a great fight. Thirty-six. <laughs> That's a great fight for him. Yeah, you're right. That is an absolutely smart move on his part to that fight the better. oldest person in wealth. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. We gotta I got stop a doing for you guys. this. I got we got. We, for you guys. Wait, wait, Miller. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. We gotta stop doing this. Mm-hmm. We gotta stop letting. Dudes fight bums and get away with it, and then other dudes who want to fight people who are almost equally where they are, and they're not fighting the champ. Everybody wants to hate on them. It's like if you're not fighting the champ anymore, you get hated on. That's just not how it works. Everybody That's doesn't fair. get a title That's shot. Not fair. That's that not is fair. fair. That's how everybody he's talks. Down so he's going what from spot number four to number nine, right? To a guy who's a known striker, it'd be different. Like. I get what you're saying for, like, Sean O'Malley, Cheeto Vera, right? Cheeto Vera didn't deserve to be in there, so we, we're we dogging Sean O'Malley for him doing what he was supposed to do and getting it back. That, that You have you have a point on that. You got a point on that. But it's not like Colby's coming off, like, some impressive dominant win and then calling out somebody who's his equal. He's going to the one guy who's like, I don't want to fight another grappler. Somebody okay, so- who's he's stated that he doesn't want to fight another grappler because he wants to have at least another W before he retires. Here's the thing, though. If Colby would have went in there after that loss and said, all right, let's run it back, everybody would have absolutely bashed that man. Miller sat up here and bashed him for getting as many title shots as he's gotten and everything. So now when he goes and calls out a guy who we should be calling out, who we should be he fighting, should be calling who's out on the same guy. level, people still hate on it. What he do you want? You want him to fight guy. for the belt? You want him to... And guess what? If he fights Shavkat and beats Shavkat, he gets another title shot, and you'll hate on that again. So how does he win? It makes more sense than calling out Steven Thompson than than expecting a title shot. He's calling the easiest fight in the rankings. I think think MVP beats him at this point, honestly. I think it's that bad. Okay, listen. He calls out Shavkat. He beats Shavkat. Do y'all think he does? Listen, just answer my question. He calls out Shavkat. He beats Shavkat. Do y'all think he deserves a title shot? Hell no. He's fought for it three so times then, already. Why? No, so no, then no. why would he call out Shavkat? If he beat Shavkat, then he well, could he maybe try. To try. Get back to it. Yeah, right. then he needs to beat Bilal, Shavkat. He needs like two to three wins. But here's what I think he should have done. And I think he should have he either should have called out Burns or he should have called out Jack Della Maddalena. One of those two. Those because they're both guys who are either on their way up or on their way down, and they're still considered, like, title contention holders, where nobody's looking at Stephen Thompson and going, That's that guy's going to make it to the belt. Yeah, to go from fighting for the title to fighting Stephen Thompson is kind of wild, but... I'm, this is what I'm trying to tell y'all, though. Y'all don't want him to fight for the belt anymore. Y'all are tired of him fighting for the belt. Y'all sit up here and said it. No, no, no. no. Freak out. I get what you're saying. What I'm saying is, as, as so a now fighter... now you're upset. So now, no, not only were you... You're upset to fighting back to the belt... Contention. You're upset he's fighting That's for the belt cool. too much. Now he calls out a dude who doesn't have the belt. Now you're upset he's fighting the dude who doesn't have the belt and I, doesn't have a I'm chance of getting the belt. Called out that he's trying to retire another 40-plus fighter. He's just Jake Paul of the welterweight division. Question for Bro, you guys. Spe- speaking he's of, got to get a get back fight. Like well, I, that's this is what I'm. The Gilbert, 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 Gilbert Burns is a good yeah, one. They both the lost. Luke. Then call out and call out Jack Della Maddalena, but not the one guy who is specifically asked for not a grappling match. Is what I'm saying. 
Let him start a You're, run. Stephen Thompson's not a good name are, to start a run. Are though, are are you, uh, well, first of all, y'all want to talk mean, about I mean, if you need your confidence Bastion. back. Y'all want to talk about some not bashing somebody who has a legacy and has all-time fights and stuff in Wonderboy. I get he's old, but here's the deal. That's a legend right there. That's an all-time great is. right there. He is. But Stephen Thompson should be fighting MVP, not fucking Colby Covington. It shouldn't even be like a question about who Stephen Thompson should be fighting. It Thompson should be a striker. But what I want to know is how does Colby win? He fights Wonder, for the belt listen, too much. Y'all don't want him to fight it, for the belt it's, too it's much. Easy. Now he calls out Wonder Boy. Y'all don't want him it's, to fight Wonder Boy. Okay, he, call, he calls out Shafkai. What if he beat Shafkai? Does it's he get another easy. title shot? No, we don't want him to get a title shot. Trey, so he should a, just start call out like, what is he supposed to do? I'll tell you right now. There's plenty of other names that he can call out. There's JDM. There's Gilbert Burns. There's Gary. There's Brady. Okay, Miller, there's plenty Miller, of names. Miller. And your name. And out of all guys, the names you, you, Miller, you bring up, Stephen Miller, Thompson? Okay, listen. Okay, listen. That's horrible. Yes, okay, listen. Great. We, we get it's one of those terrible. guys. If he's to beat one of those guys, he goes right back up into title. I'm not saying he goes right back into title. And then, and then y'all. I don't and then y'all are pissed that he's back in title contention. So he, how does he win? He, how does he, he needs three, he, he needs at least three good wins after giving us four fucking stinkers. I, so, why can't Wonder, so why can't Wonder Boy be a part of that? Let him. That's what I'm saying. Let okay, him get so, going. It's a get a back fight. Okay. Why can't that be a part of it? Okay, so if uh, let's say let's say. Uh, Jolton Almeida somehow makes it back to like uh, title contention and fights Tom Aspinall, right? That that's the level of competition we're at for the rest of welterweight, where these people are like the best. But if Jolton Almeida was then like, you know what? Let me fight Rosenstrike. Give me Rosenstrike. That's the best fight available. You're gonna you're gonna show up and be like, yeah, he's doing the right thing and trying to stay in the in in the people's good graces. Or you're gonna look at that and go, he's picking the the easiest fish. And nobody wants to see it. The easiest Almeida stylistic hasn't, fight for him. Almeida hasn't had four title shots in a row, though. So, no, I, that's, I'm just saying, in like in Which terms of a, worse, a worse fight, for Kobe. It, in terms of a fight that is just a mismatch, a kickboxer yeah. versus an absolute grappler who who could be at the top of the uh, the here, top of the sport. But is it? Y'all, and everybody y'all called it out too. Here's the deal, though. Y'all don't ever want to see Kobe fight for the belt again. So why does it matter who that's he calls besides, out and fight? Because it's a Why does it matter fight that, who he calls it's a fight. fight that nobody wants. Nobody wants the Stephen Thompson fight. So at least call if you don't if, if want you're gonna, any fight from Kobe though. I just, said, I just said a bunch of them. Gilbert Burns is a good so one. JDM. If you don't you know, wear a refought Dominic Cruz, Miller, would you, you be happy like, and give him a title shot from that? You don't Miller, like the Gilbert listen, Burns fight? That's what I'm saying. He beats one or two of the guys that y'all are talking about, and that puts him back in title contention, and y'all are pissed that he's back in title contention. So how the does he win? Fight at least two other people before he goes back in there, and he needs at least three or four good fights before he does. I'm not saying that he shouldn't ever fight again. It's just not likely because he's old, and he's, he's showing signs of slowing down. And also, he's just he's not showing up when the time he, – He's Dustin Poirier for welterweight. He, he, he's a journeyman too. So at this point, fight though. You know the names right under you: the Gilbert Burns, JDM, Gary. Fight all of them. Nobody wants to see him fight for the title again. But yeah, fight people close to your ranking: five, number five, six, number seven, number eight. You want to pick off Stephen Thompson, the guy that is not even the same style fight. Sean Brady. At least that's a wrestler versus a wrestler. Nobody cares wants. Col- Sean, uh, nobody cares about Sean Brady. I'd rather see <laughs> him versus Sean Brady than him versus Stephen Thompson. But of course. Oh, much rather him call out Bilal. At least that would have been an entertaining presser. And, and they have prior yeah. beef as well, too. The Bilal would he's have been a good sell, one. He's got to sell some tickets. You know, Bilal don't sell. Bilal, <laughs> yeah. question, you live the fucking well, pita bread guys, alone, man. We, we have a few guys waiting. Just I, I want to hear your thoughts, Beto. Who, um, Kobe versus Gilbert Burns. Who wins? Oh, Gilbert oh. looks like he... Uh, uh, I... I'm going Gilbert just because Kobe looks so bad in that Leon fight. Uh, Kobe versus Gary, who wins? Uh, beta. Uh, Gary by uh, judge's gift. Interesting. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Let me get some other guys in here. Beta. Any last thoughts? Um. Now you know what. Y'all stay groovy. Y'all stay real groovy. All right.
Just remember that Trey called uh, Kobe a journeyman, and that should no, set up the rest of your week. Uh, I'm baby. pretty sure this is a skinwalker here, and not Trey, because I don't. I'm, there's no way he, that came out of his mouth. There's no way. True, true story. Bring uh, twice I, if you're the real person. Just just move the glasses. Let me know. I, I, I couldn't believe it. Thank you, Beta. Peace. Yep. Let's add Chris. Chris been waiting for a while. Chris. Yo, yo, yo. Sorry about that. I was having a conversation with someone. No, all good, all good. Oh, we have like two to three minutes, then we have someone else, and then we got to get out of here. So, Chris, talk to us. Yeah. See, see, but sorry, my brother, man. So, uh, okay, let me say this. Mm-hmm. I want to know, who are you rooting for in case that fight happens? I'll talk about between Dustin Poirier versus Islam Malkajan. Who do I think is gonna win, or who am I rooting for? Is if, that the same if, question? If, uh-huh. if if it happens, if it happens, yeah. Like, are you asking who do I think is gonna win, or are you asking who would I like no, to? No, I, win I want, I want, I want you to, I want you to answer my question right now. <laughs> the question is, who am I rooting for? Yeah. Answer the question, Miller. Okay, <laughs> rooting for easily, Dustin Poirier. Okay, let me say this: mm-hmm. if Dustin let, Poirier let him have it. Let wins. Him have it. If Dustin Poirier it. wins, well, well, we gotta wait until that fight is announced. Right. If Dustin Poirier wins, does it doesn't matter if it's KO submission or decision? I will officially submit to you two hundred and fifty dollars. All right, we got it on record. But Did- hold on, I'm not done yet. I'm not okay. done yet. Okay. If Islam Makachev wins, okay. I don't care if it's knockout, submission, or decision. Mm-hmm. It is you. We're gonna give me two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, I can't do and that. Me. I can't, and me. And me. I can't do that. I can't do that. That's and not. Uh, not? That, that's a tough what one. Is, that's, that's what does too that much tell of a, you, Chris? That, that's what does too that much, tell you? That, that's too much. Too much of a toss of fight. How, how is how is it too much? Hey, I'm asking for two hundred and fifty, not two thousand and five hundred dollars. Tell him it's Trump I, change, I think, Chris. It's Trump I, change. I think Mahashev. As far as the odds, he's gonna be like a minus two fifty, minus three hundred, even minus three fifty. So it wouldn't be a good return on investment for me to do that. That's why I wouldn't do that. A straight up. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but understand this: like, I know Dustin Poirier had a good luck fight. I'm talking about back last week, but with his Amagachev. That's not gonna be luck for him. Uh, I'll, I'll and, tell you this, and, get, and, and get this, get this, get this, get this. If he loses, he'll become the third UFC superstar to lose three title fights since Alexander Covington and Colby Covington. Oh, I, I love how Colby Covington is in the is in that stat already. That's why I don't think it's gonna happen. Poirier is not gonna let that happen. I, I'll tell you this, Chris. I will give you a hundred push-ups on camera if Mahashev beats Poirier. How about that? Save the camera I think, works. <laughs> I, th- no. I think we should make him measure himself on on camera, Chris. I think we make him expose his real height of five three. On That's camera, crazy. Finally. That's crazy. I'm taller than Cejudo and Marab and Piotrion. All right. Honestly, I'm only five four. I'm not gonna lie. That's my current height. And, five and, four. And, and and we and we have more power than Trey does. In an overhand right, just with our simple jabs. Uh, Chris, any last thoughts on who's overrated, who's underrated in the UFC? Overrated, let's see. That I could say the guy who is going to fight Jose Aldo in 301, Jonathan Martinez. Jonathan, you think he's overrated? Well, if he loses, then yeah. <laughs> okay. And then who's underrated in the UFC right now? Underrated right now, I could say... What's the name of that guy? Oh, the guy who's fighting Oliveira among the rookie. Oh, wow. That's... I, 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 I like guess that. I guess we'll find out. Listen, you have a new nickname, uh, Chris. You have given us stats earlier how you said uh, the third UFC superstar to lose three title uh, shots. Um, you've been given a new name. They call you the People's Champ in chat. Now they call you the Encyclopedia. I like that. What do you think about that? Well, that was good. I love that yeah. because, honestly, I'm not going to lie. When I predict things to happen in the UFC, it comes true. Like, for example... I ain't going to lie, and I'm sorry to say this in front of Trey. I know you don't like Adesanya, <laughs> but guess what? I predicted that he was going to fight. Even This was before this loss of, of uh, Sean Strickland with Pajeda. When I saw that fight, I was like, trust me, he's it's not going to be 4-0, it's going to be 3-1. I 
I laughed to bed. I was like, Listen. and it's okay. It's all right. You don't you don't like is out, out of science. It's all right. But understand this: Pajeda's champion right now, and he's gonna beat Hill. Uh, Jamal Hill, that's where we disagree. Chris, thank you for the call. You're also given the name The Historian, so you got all the best nicknames in chat. Uh, thank you for the call, Chris Faith. We got one more, all right? No problem. Th thank you, Chris. Uh, we got one more, and let's see what Joe has to I say. Can't, because I for can't him to believe call back, that. Miller, I can't believe that. I'm sorry. We just got to touch on this. That's the first time we've actually heard Chris Faith's nurse in the background. Finally, we <laughs> proved that I have been right this entire time. That was his nurse in the background. All right, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, that was his mom. I think it was telling him to come eat. He said she's telling him to calm down and come to eat already. But uh, yeah, I just want to say that Trey's takes tonight have been really subpar. And, so, and it's expected. Mm -hmm. So they've they've been really subpar. Um, I didn't even get to comment on his Engano take, which is completely off the rails. For him to even say that. Uh, his he, his legacy is ruined. I mean, cause just because he got knocked out one time. I mean, you, you know how many fighters we've seen get knocked out and yeah, come back and have a great career. Now I'm just saying to you, Trey, that his legacy is ruined. Now I will say this is what I will say. Okay. I will say that depending on what he does next will determine if his legacy is indeed ruined or not. That's a if good he, point. That's if he comes point. back and does another boxing match against, you know, some some killer, yeah, he's going to ruin his career. If he comes back in the UFC or in the PFL, wherever he's signed to, MMA, and knocks someone's block off, his career is definitely not ruined. So I, I, want, to, wow. I want to say that. Beautiful. First, first of all, we're going to have no idea if he knocks anybody's block off because I guess we'll have to rely on one of the 14 people that are watching to tell us. Four point six thousand, actually. Second, second of all, if it's in the PFL, I could care less because you couldn't name one fighter in the PFL besides Jake Paul and Francis Ngannou right now. Third of all, there is no <laughs> chance he ever touches the UFC ever again, ever. They lost out. Yeah, they lost out. All right. They, 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 they lost out. I mean, listen, it's a boxing match. He got knocked out. It is what it is. The guy's up thirty million. With no with no career now. Uh thirty million. So yeah, but that's 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 with no career now. Yeah, but thirty million after two fights, Trey. He wasn't that's... gonna make that money in the UFC. So I'm saying I could go rob a bank too and have thirty million. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's exactly what he did. Doing. He robbed a bank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're talking that's exactly about Francis what he did. Nagano. Francis Ngannou, you're talking about the biggest scam artist in in, in fighting history. Call that's him whatever you want. That boy just He's made a walking He's that the boy just He's made the Ponzi two bags. Of... I remember He's the Ponzi scheme of fighting. I remember Trey saying that Francis and Ganu fumbled the bag, and it's pretty obvious that it, Trey was wrong. He did not fumble the bag. If anything, he put himself in a position no to where he can do whatever he wants now. He, he, he no won. Legacy. No he won. legacy. He beat Dana no White. Legacy. He beat Dana White. And, and then they were legacy? saying, they were his legacy is the scariest heavyweight knockout artist in the UFC history. He's and, the scariest and, heavyweight knockout artist in UFC, UFC history. UFC history. Knocked out all the time. And we'll knocked never, out all the time. What are you talking about? I would what even mean, add to his I mean, legacy. You don't think is, this is going to be his only knockout, do you? Wait, Miller, you would add what to his legacy? I would even add to his legacy that we'll never know who would have won in a heavyweight fight between John Jones and Francis Ngannou. It's up in the air. We don't know. I know who would have won. We don't know. I know who would have won. No, we don't know. That's the thing. We uh, don't know. And, and, and that's the beauty. And, and, and that might be uh, Dana White's fault. Uh, Francis Ngannou did the right thing by leaving. He had the leverage. He left, and it's beautiful. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. the, I, I saw in the chat, they said Tom Aspinall beats him, John Jones beats him, and someone else beats him. You, they were saying Pavlovich. That's what Trey said. Yeah, Bro, I know. what? He's, he's, he's losing it. He's losing it. Absolutely ever, not. Ever since, Kobe's a ever since he said a journeyman, ever since he said Kobe's a journeyman, Garn he's been going through it. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> And his lip I quivered, for the record. I, I don't know. Trey <laughs> stuttering. He's stuttering. Miller, you got him oh, stuttering. No. My Siri is popping up right now. Sorry. First of all, I don't even know what I was talking about now because my Siri just popped up started talking about some bullcrap on my computer. 
Second of all, Francis is an absolute bum. He fumbled the bag. I told you, he sold, he sold out. He sold out. Congratulations, he got a bag. He's an absolute bum. He sucks. He ain't doing nothing. Okay, he's never going to be back in the UFC. I don't care if he wins in PFL. It means nothing to me. Nobody watches his fight. He doesn't sell. He would get knocked out by Sergey. If him and Cyril were to fight Stop. again, Cyril would beat him. If he was to fight John Jones, jo John Jones would absolutely dog him. Like, this is laughable. This, this he has is, noodle this is... knees. Listen, he John has, Jones, maybe. John Jones, maybe. I come in John Jones, maybe. Love you guys. He's a bum. Hey, he, he's definitely not a bum. J John Jones <laughs> might beat him, but if he comes back to the UFC, like I said, his, his legacy isn't ruined, depending on what he does. Uh, next will determine that. Now, Miller, I want to get your opinion because you put out an Instagram short, and I have, I will have to say, I have the most liked comment on the Instagram short. Okay. You put it out about a month ago. Okay. And it said, it says, Jam it, the, I think the title was Jamal Hill knocking out Pajera. I think he has, you said, question, UFC 300. Right. And, and I, and I said, and I said, correct, Miller, correction. Pajera's going to knock out Jamal Hill. And there, I fixed it for you. And that has <laughs> the most likes on it. Miller, do you still hold, are you still of the opinion that's that a, Jamal Hill is going to win against Pajera? Be honest. That's a that's a great question. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, unfortunately, we're running a little short on, on time left. But I'll tell you this. Uh, I'll, I'll answer your question clearly, and then we could break it down a little bit more in the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. You think he's going to win? Absolutely. I oh might I, listen. Poirier was my underdog pick that got the job done. Taporia was my pick that got the underdog uh pick. Th this is the one though. This is the one, Joe. This is the one. This is the one where everyone's against me. They're wild. Hill has fast hands. He got to stay away from the leg kicks. He's gonna be Love able you. to do so. He's gonna land some Love big you. shots down the middle, and I think he wins by so knockout. So you are crazy. So sloppy, he's not a technical fighter, and I'm telling you right now, as soon as Alex landed, lands that one, all, all it's gonna take is one. He's gonna touch him one time on he's the He's too chin. slow. It's gonna have Jamal wobble. He's too slow. He oh my gosh. Do not come out. Jamal is such a sloppy fighter. The he speed is no gonna make a difference. The speed is gonna make a difference. Hill has power. The speed is gonna make a difference. I'm, I'm, I wish that were tomorrow. I wish that were now, so we could watch it. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. I had a gut feeling that Leon was gonna get the job done. It happened. This is the, this is another one. The the gut <laughs> feeling is just as strong. So yes, to answer your question, Joe, absolutely. Like I said, what's in your Lacroix can? What are you drinking? Listen, I'm just that listen. We know we know that the UFC. I know that the UFC has a Bud Light sponsorship now. I didn't I didn't think you were gonna take it that seriously with. You know, drinking Bud Lights and everything before each stream, during each stream, behind the camera, not showing it on screen. But we, I know that I can see the Bud Light tint in the shades that you have on right now. I can see the blue tint of two the Bud things. Light can. Two things. Chevy First, and I can smell it through the screen. For, for, firstly, uh, two important things. Firstly, um, hola, Canito, ¿cómo está? Espero que todo esté bien. That's uh, the cousin, the family from PR is in the chat. Hope you guys are doing good. Love you guys. That's number one. Got to get the family, you know. Got to give a shout out to them. Hola, amigos. Como esta? Muy and bien. Then, and then number you two. <laughs> and, and then number, that actually didn't sound too bad. That was. Yeah. Trey speaks great. Spanish. You didn't know that? Trey, only, other th only other thing I know is tu quieres ser mi novio, novia, but Wow, you matter. said, do you want to be my boyfriend? You would say something wait, like that. Wait, you what? <laughs> novia is girlfriend. You said novio, which is boyfriend. You would ask no, I said, that, actually. I said, I said, I said, no, no. So, um, num number two, guys, and I think this was the highlight of the stream today. Trey admitted that Kobe was a journeyman. That's all I got to say. Trey, Trey could lead us out. I'm out of here. Number one commentary show on YouTube. Uh, take us out. Uh, I that hurts. Look, that. look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I didn't listen. Sometimes, let me just say this. Sometimes you got to pull. Good to tell the truth. The you got to pull back all the layers, and you got to get down to the brass tacks. Okay. Wow. Sometimes you got to be honest with yourself. Sometimes you got to let yourself know it's Amen. okay. It's okay. You just got to face the truth. Hear the music. Okay, and that's what I did, Miller has still yet to do that. The guy's special, okay? He really is. Because honestly, I think you believe some of the stuff he says. 
Is it All absolutely it. pitiful? Is it absolutely awful? Is it the worst takes we've heard in UFC? Does he get roasted on Instagram every single day? Does he post? Does he get roasted on TikTok every time he throws something up there? Is he getting roasted in the comments every time we're on a live stream? Yes, I feel bad for the guy. It's pitiful. Okay? But don't worry. Okay? Don't worry. There is a savior. There is one guy. There is somebody who does know the UFC. There is somebody who does know everything that the UFC and everything that goes on in the UFC. Everything about the UFC fighters, everything about fighting in general. I can tell you what happens, baby. The source, the king, the one who gets it done was here and was back again. Dropping the knowledge. Now, I'm telling y'all, this guy's talking crazy on Dustin Poirier. Okay? Dustin Poirier looked awful. I don't want to hear anything about that anymore. Oh, my gosh. Colby Covington is still a dog. I don't get how he can win. People hate on that. Francis Nagano is an absolute bum, and so is Leon. Leon's the most boring champion in the UFC. So I hate that y'all had to sit here and listen to Miller spew all this bull crap once again for another week. But don't worry. I'll be back again next week to let y'all know what's going on and how to grow the knowledge in the UFC game because this guy's not going to help you anymore. I'm the source. I'm the king. I'm the one who gets it done. I'm Mr. Intel. I'm out of here. Hey, go follow.